I had the first experience of the youth. The military is full of youth because you cannot have an old man walking 40 kilometers a night with these old knees and uh, breathing system. Some have taken some funny stuff. So it's the youth that forms the bulk of the military. And my 15 years in the military gave me a very fast glimpse of what the youth can do. All the military battles you see, as much as the general get the credit, it is the young soldiers who start coming out with the ideas of how to go about it in terms of battle planning. I've also worked closely with the intelligence. And in the intelligence you see a lot of things that are not supposed to be seen. So I have that experience. And I also ended up working for nine good years in the corporate world. I worked with one of the most prestigious companies, Kenya Electricity Generating Company. And uh, that experience was very good. But before that, I had actually worked with the Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission for four good years. At that time, it was contractual. And I did four years. I, I, I was the architect of forming the undercover investigation unit because we knew that uh, corruption is a very, very secretive uh, criminal offense. I keep on saying it's, it's the only offense on earth that has got no complainant. You know, if your house is broken into, you'll come and say, look, walivunja grill, waka ingia hapa, waka chukua TV, waka toa hapa, waka... You show some tangible evidence. In corruption, you don't see anything. People have done a big deal. They have stolen a lot of money. And uh, you'll find them in churches, in mosques. And uh, I keep on telling people that this is a very interesting country because when we do investigation in government agencies and we take the minutes that started that particular project, project when you go to the minutes, preliminary, the meeting started with a word of prayer. These are, these are thieves planning to steal, but they always go with a word of prayer. I'm not trying to ridicule the imam and the pastor, but that is, that is the pattern in the country. All investigation when you do, and we tell them, can you give us the minutes that you had for this uh, particular project? Go there. Presence, chairman, member, what? Preliminary. The, the meeting started with a word of prayers. But these are thieves planning to how to steal. So the big question is this. The youth, the youth and uh, governance in Kenya, does integrity matter? A famous American billionaire said that when you are employing somebody for a, work, for, for a job, you key in three things. This somebody called Warren Buffett, he's a very rich man, said you look at integrity, you look at intelligence, sometimes you can remove the word intelligence and say competence, and you look at the, the, the motivation of that person. Is he somebody who can work hard? Is he somebody who can deliver? When you interview that person, you'll see all the indicators. He tells you, if that person does not have integrity, don't even bother to employ that person. What is happening with our youth today? Our youth get mobilized. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hitting at the governor. I'm not hitting at my MP. I'm, I'm hitting at the political environment in the country. Today in this country, uh, we are moving to a stage that if you don't have money, you have no business to be in politics. I don't know whether it is true, Governor Sang. Governor Sang is a very young and very youthful governor, and I think you won the seat because the youth were tired of the old, and they said, Tutachukwa hikijan hata kama hana pesa. And I can see something that is very unique about you. When you came in here, I asked my officers, Governor Mefika, but I'm trying to see indicators that shows a governor is around. <laughs> there, there are some indicators that gives you a picture. You will find six, seven Prados. You will find a chess car. You will find the security men because they want to impress the governor. They push people aside here and there. So I never saw those indicators. Then when I walked into the holding room, I found the governor seated. Humility. He came with one, one Prado. 
That is humility. The same with my MP. Uh, I just found him inside. I called him last night. I said, please, we want you to come in because there are three cups you are putting on. You are an ex staff of the, the, the university. You are the local area of MP and the CEO is, your, is under you. So please don't let me down. And he said, I have a lot of work. We had a lot, long function yesterday, but uh, I will come on, uh, and attend the, the, the function. I'm talking about the youth and the politicians. A research was done in, in the world, and a very disturbing trend is going on in the world. It's not only in Kenya, but across the globe, that around the world, they say that corruption has become the primary mechanism by which power and politics function. The politics is the engine, the fuel for politics is corruption. So who can address this problem? If we have 65% of the youth in this country, of Kenyans in this country, uh, you see, the urban area, the values have, have been eroded. In the rural areas, the values are. So we need to restore the value for the youth. When it comes to political culture, I don't want to ask Mishimua, but I asked one person, I was addressing a forum last week, but one, with judges in this country, and there was a politician. Personal gain or for other people's gain, that becomes corruption. So when you see a university, when you have a head of department is from this part of the country, within two years, that is corruption. Tribalism is corruption. Negative ethnicity is corruption. When you, do, uh, when you are entitled to, to, or you are given something to do and you believe that even absconding from office is corruption. Mwa Kenya, when you go to exams, uh, you find everybody, if it's a lady, in a miniskirt. Because the answers are somewhere in between. You pretend you are scratching yourself and you are looking at the answers. Or uh, if it is, all, all that is, uh, is, is corruption. The integrity of the academic, the integrity of the academic standard of this country must be safeguarded. Because ask anyone, if you go abroad and you say you are from Kenya and you give your academic certificate, people respect you. But this aspect of every time you want a shortcut, people have got degrees, uh, PhDs, when you ask them, uh, what, what did you do as your thesis? They say, you know, uh, how can you forget something you've been writing for three years before you graduated? Or you've done masters? Uh, what, was your, uh, what were you doing? I was doing masters in conflict management. What was your subject matter? You have a PhD, you cannot stand in a university for 20, 10 minutes to give a lecture about what you did. That, that tells you there's a problem. And it all touches on integrity. So let me take you through the issue of the categorization of corruption. In corruption, we have what we call the grand corruption which is mainly administered by the political elites. And then you have administrative corruption, which is this one, uh, Honorable Owen Bayer was saying. He was asked his ID card to, to, to give money. You are stopped by the policeman. If there's a policeman here, he can go and report, say the CEO knows that you are collecting bribes there. Up or next to Tuskies. Harassing uh, Tuk Tuk, 100 bob, 50 bob. That's administrative corruption. But then, there's this big question. Is there a difference between grand corruption and, uh, and uh, administrative corruption? The question is this. When you say administrative corruption is petty corruption, look critically at the corruption of the police. A policeman will see a car, that, a matter that is not worthy to be on the road, and he will take a bribe of 200 shillings or 500 shillings leave that car move, that car when it rolls, it kills how many people? Eight people injuring another eight permanently. Would you call that petty corruption? 
It's not petty, petty corruption. It's, it's, it's still uh, grand corruption. We have the, what you call, cryptocracy, where you have, a government you have government officials who decide how government projects are to be done. Not because they are priority to the country, because this, these projects have got high-end value of corruption returns, maybe road construction. I'm just here because barabara is not going to be done in Nomba barabara ina jengo mzuri lakini kwa mali naenda hakuna watu mingombe tu. So the villagers decide they use maize to dry on the on the road instead of vehicles passing. Somebody did that because there was a good kickback in uh, in, in 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 that project. We have the strategic corruption where government actually weaponize corrupt for its foreign policy. So if we look at the youth and politics you are 65% of the Kenyans. Politicians, they come and dish out money to you. I want to give you a very radical su suggestion, and I know the media is here, but uh, I won't fear talking about it. The best way to do now, because we are heading to a situation where people want to use money to get political seats. And you know very well that money, if, if governor, I'm not hitting you, but I, I just give a very practical example. I have spent 200 million, because it's, it's not easy to be a governor. A governor is a very, very lucrative post. In fact, they say it's the third senior post from the president and deputy president. Even the CS, they are not as, power, they are not as endowed as governors. You know, they are, they are mini kings in wherever they are. So everybody, if you look at when the constitution was enacted, people, most people went to senator because they had not known what is a governor. After five years, most of, the, most of them made a U-turn. They wanted to become a governor. Waligundwele mtungi asali, ahiko kwa senator, ahiko kwa governor. So they made a U-turn. The third election of 2022, now people even risk selling their property, farms, wanting to become a governor. So if you have spent 200 million and you are governor, and the, in the next five years there's another election, what do you think this person will do? Will he serve you or he will accumulate? Accumulation. Who has, who, whom did he give money to? Mainly the youth. Now he's back Stealing left, center, and right is not about Governor Sang, but we're saying quite a number of them, <coughs> they want to return back their money. Secondly, they want to have reserve for the 2027 election. Thirdly, in case they are defeated, they don't live miserable life. At least they can sustain good lifestyle. So they have a triple uh, strategy of how to survive. So what you can do as a youth, and I'm telling you as a CEO of ESCC, when they bring that money, kula kabisa. Kula, 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 kula kabisa. Usione haya. Tell him you are the only one we are going to vote for you. Don't worry. When it comes to voting, don't vote from your appetite. Vote from your, from your head. You will achieve two objectives. You will get the right leadership, and you will pre create a deterrence. They will know this strategy ya pesa Are we together? Then you will find your county developing very well. You will not be forced to go to Mombasa looking for a job. You will not be forced to move from Nandi to go to Nairobi or Eldoric looking for a job because you have a county that is creating wealth since you have a focused leader. So <coughs> let's, let's agree on that. That when these people bring money, Kula kabisa. Musione uruma. Kula, kula, kula. When it comes to voting, just vote at the right person. And you tell him, look here, we, we knew there's a danger that uh, when you come to this seat, our first mission would be to recoup your money. So we were scared of you. Youth are more focused. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not blaming the, the, the old people. But youth are very innovative. Youth are risk takers youth understand the problem of fellow youth. So you can balance, you balance uh, 
when you get a youth on this side, this side you can get an old man to moderate the youth. You know, just like vijana kama mna kuna speed mbio kabisa. So you may require another politician here, maybe a senator, and then he moderates the governor, governor moderates the senator, and it, it balances. In, in France, uh, when they vote for, they, are two, they have two levels of uh, elections. When they vote for the prime minister, the mayor, they vote opposite party, deliberate. They say they don't want them to go and collude. And uh, you have political science here? Yeah. You know about Machiavelli. Machiavelli said for the prince to enjoy the food, the storeman and the cook must be enemies. Because if they are friends, they'll be colluding on how to steal food from the king, and the king will be starving. So make sure that you have that balancing of one side can countercheck the other side. In uh, the challenges of the youth, the youth today, they have a very, you have very big problems, Se multitude of problems. And I'll give an example of myself. You've been told I have worked for 40 years. Most of you here, when I was employed, there was no e even imagination from your parents that they were going to have a boy or a girl. Biologically, maybe you are even somewhere, in, I don't know, the backbone or whatever. But, but you are not there. Why, how did, I join, how, how did I join the military at the age of 18? Because there were a lot of opportunities. During our time, uh, Honorable, uh, the, the Vice Chancellor will tell you, you had an option. Do you want to go to Form, four, uh, to form 5? If you get a C plus and above, government agencies are there calling you for jobs. They even come to schools and tell you, if you want to join Kenya Power, don't go to A level. As long as you have passed physics and chemistry and mathematics, what we shall do, we will employ you and we have a college at Kenya Power, you'll be trained. KRA, the same. Uh, Kenya Post Authority, it used to be called Kenya Cargo Handling, the same. Kenya Railways, uh, Bamburi, all these places. Today, there are no opportunities. People come with all kinds of degrees. I, 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 I sit in interviews. I saw one job applicant. He had about five degrees, including one of theology. I think apart from the science subject, he also wanted spiritual uh, intervention. So he did, he, did, he did theology also. People come with PhDs. There are no jobs. What will help the youth is the honesty and hard work. You come out of the university, you can even be an engineer, but be ready to start maybe your laundry business. Because honesty and hard work helps a lot. And I'll give you a good example. I have a small farm in Narani, about five acres. So I was told, go and get somebody from up country. They, he will do a good job for you. And I employed a young man. The first year he came, we harvested cassava, everything. Now, after one year, he became a Kijana area. He, he got a beautiful Giriama girl. Uh, informally, me, I was not aware. Then we, we planted cassava, everything. So I asked him, George, Sasa hii mihogo mbuna haijia kuwa tari. Anambia mzee, hiko ugonjwa mengia pambaya sana. I look at the cassava leaves, everything is intact. Then he tells me, So for one year, I did not harvest anything from the cassava. The second year, the same. I asked some people, but I see a lot of cassava. Kilifi pale na uzwa, huku pale karibu na Mombasa cement, pale wakina mama, they are staying with. 